Feeling frustrated that it feels like native English speakers don't understand you? Are you often asked to repeat yourself or are you misunderstood when you speak? This can be due to many things, but the good news is there are simple ways you can improve your accent. Improving your accent can improve your confidence and allow more people to hear what you have to say. There are many reasons why native speakers might not understand you. Um, later on in this video, I'm going to go through some of the less obvious um, but critically important ways that we communicate that could lead to misunderstanding. But first, let's talk about the obvious and what I focus on primarily in my training and my channel and in my program, my online program, Pronunciation Pro. Um, it's accent and pronunciation in English. So everyone has an accent. So an accent is simply the carryover of the sounds and a rhythm of your first language or your mother tongue to another language. So we're talking about um, the American English accent and that's what I train and teach. So I'm teaching people from all over the world with various mother tongues how to speak English with more of an American accent or a standard American accent. Okay, so that even within the United States, there are various accents, but we're talking about the, the standard American accent or the American accent that most native speakers are going to understand clearly. So there really is nothing wrong with an accent unless it is getting in the way of clear communication. So the goal of communication is to exchange information from one person to another. It's to create that connection and exchange of information. However, if you think you are saying one thing while your listener is hearing another, then you have a barrier or a block in your communication or your exchange of information. So there are many things that can get in the way of this, this manner of communication. So first, accent and pronunciation. So we have to look at, you know, what sounds are you, you saying compared to what a native English speaker is saying. So when you recognize, okay, I'm saying this sound, native speakers are saying this sound, I need to both hear what a native speaker is, is saying or the sound that they're making, I need to hear the difference, and then I need to retrain my mouth to be able to produce that sound the same as a native speaker. So that's the process of training accent. It's the process of training pronunciation. And it takes a very step-by-step -step deliberate plan and process to be able to do this. It's not something that will automatically happen just by being around native English speakers. It's something that you really have to train very specifically and deliberately. Um, and you can learn more about these specific training methods um, here on my channel or um, within my program in a step-by-step -step way. And to access my program, you can go to pronunciationpro.com. All right, but let's dive into some of these other areas of communication that, you know, that can get in the way of someone understanding you clearly. Okay, so first we've already talked about pronunciation. Okay, when you're saying uh, one sound and thinking it's another, or a native speaker says another, or the native speaker is expecting you to say it a certain way and you're saying something different, it can really create these communication um, barriers or blocks. Another thing about pronunciation is that, you know, English words sometimes differ by just one vowel sound or one consonant sound. So if you're not getting the right consonant or the right vowel sound and you're mispronouncing a word, you may be changing it to a whole different word. So that meaning is going to change because you've changed the word. All right, so that's why pronunciation is so important in creating this clear um, communication that doesn't have this barrier or block to it. So the second area that needs to be worked on to improve clarity in communication is the tone changes. Okay, we frequently call this intonation in American English accent training. So for example, you could say, the meeting is starting. The meeting is starting? The meeting is starting? The meeting is starting, okay? Depending on how I use intonation, it's going to change the meaning, okay? I can make it a statement, I can make it a question, I can make it something that is urgent, I can make it um, kind of like I need some clarif clarification. So if I said, the meeting is starting, 
It's like, okay, are we talking about the meeting starting or something else starting? Okay, so that tone change changes the meaning of what you're saying. So we really have to look at tone and the way that you're using tone so that you're using tone effectively to communicate what you're really intending to communicate. All right, the third area that can affect communication is body language. Okay, body language. How we're using our body, the eye contact that we're making, smiling or not smiling, um, kind of the position of our bodies. Are we showing respect or disrespect based on our body language? Now, different cultures are going to have different expectations when it comes to body language. So you really have to learn, if you're, if you're adapting to more of an American culture, it's recognizing, okay, if I'm speaking with other native um, English speakers, uh, I need to adjust my body language to theirs um, or help communicate with them to help them understand what your cultural norm is so that they can have more awareness of the reason why your body language is, is you know, in a specific way, okay? So having that cultural awareness of knowing that different cultures are going to bring different norms when it comes to body language and being respectful of that and recognizing that, that this is, you know, maybe different than what you're used to and being aware of that is going to help you adapt and change in ways that will create more effective communication. Okay. Number four is cultural differences, okay, or cultural references using phrases incorrectly or misunderstanding the phrases of others. So this can really get in the way. So I encourage you, if you're not understanding some cultural references, ask for clarification. Don't just sit in the dark and, and kind of exclude yourself from the conversation because you're not understanding some of these cultural references. Ask questions. Um, that actually can create some good connection when you're, you're you're asking questions with curiosity, all right? Number five, grammar and vocabulary. So obviously just that foundation of English learning um, and organizing words and sentences, okay? That can create miscommunication if, you know, you're intending to say one thing but saying another. So we have to really recognize that that, you know, that is going to sometimes affect that communication and that clarity of communication. And if more grammar and vocabulary work needs to be done, then that's, that's a step that you might need to be taking. Now, the sixth way that communication can be affected is through differing perspectives and experiences. So I like to think about this as you're wearing a specific shade of glasses. Say that you have kind of rose colored glasses. You're wearing a shade of glasses and you're seeing the world through this specific lens or through these specific glasses. Okay, you put that lens on and your lens is based on your experiences, your upbringing, your um, perspective, the thoughts and attitudes and beliefs that you are bringing to um, your world. And you're viewing life through these glasses. Now, other people are going to have other glasses that they're viewing life through. So they're gonna have their own shade of glasses. And they're going to be viewing life in a different way with a different perspective, with different strengths and weaknesses and experiences. So we need to be aware that everyone is wearing these different glasses. And the more that you can kind of, you know, look to kind of like think, okay, if I take these glasses off and I put on their glasses, what is it that they're experiencing? What perspective do they have that's different than my own? And let's just try that out and, and see how that affects the way I'm seeing things as well. Can I look through their shade of glasses and recognize, oh, that's why they're saying it that way, or that's the way why they're thinking that certain way. Okay, the more that we can kind of adapt and recognize and get that perspective of others and help communicate to others the way that we're seeing things, the more we can have this connected communication and remove those barriers. So having awareness of the way you communicate can help you understand where those breakdowns occur and how to repair those breakdowns. 
you can only control you. So the more you can do to help your listener um, and uh, change the way that you're speaking or communicating will give you more success. I also encourage you to communicate with others what you may need from them so that they can adjust their communication style as well. Since you're still here, I want to remind you to hit subscribe and follow along so that you can get more helpful videos like this one. And stick around and check out this next video, Say What? Common Pronunciation Mistakes You Might Be Making.